we're going to cut some maple into some bulb lengths over on a nearby tree job that a buddy of mine did. He gave me a call a few weeks ago about a maple he cut down. So we're going to go over there and do a little product review on something else we're going to be using today. But before I go, i got to get a little bit of a good edge here on the steel. What I like to do is, very important whenever you're doing hand filing or just sharpening, is take you a sharpie and mark your tooth to where you start at so you know where you end and you don't keep on filing forever. I tell you, you can keep going forever if you don't know where you started at. And something else here, guys, I'll show you all. You've seen me do a video on this in the past, and I use this every time now. I've had this going for about seven months. And this is, without a doubt, the best tool that I've found for sharpening chainsaws. It's ridiculous how sharp you can get it with this simple system. And the reason I like this so much is because it not only files the tooth, but it also files the depth gauge with every stroke. And so it's really, you can't fail as long as you get the angle right and you're putting enough pressure down on it. And uh, it's hard to beat, man. They're on Amazon. I'll put a link down below. I'll link in all my videos where I get these at. And your steel dealer may have a better deal. I don't know. Uh, Amazon was about $5 higher than my steel dealer was here in town. But with the steel dealer, I had to pay tax with Amazon and I wouldn't have to. But one thing you want to make sure you get is the correct file size when you buy this for your chain because you don't want to get the wrong file for the wrong size chain then you'll be really just messing up your good chain but a great tool here can't talk about it enough it is just awesome and i'm not sponsored by steel or anything like that this is no paid endorsement this is just showing you guys some good tools that work for me and this has been a real good tool for sharpening these saws because i tell you i struggled for years when it comes to sharpening saws it was just something i just really could not get a good hang of when it comes to hand filing. Alright guys, this is what we're doing today. I got a new product here to try out. And I got this from Logrite back in January and this is the first time I'm using it. And what this is, is a log stand that you hook on your cant hoods or your PV. Now Logrite sells a cant hook and a PV both. It will connect to both of them. We're gonna be using a cant hook today because I don't even own a PV. And essentially what it does, it attaches to your cant hook or your log PV, either one, and, it, and you're able to roll the log. And at that point you get it off the ground. So when you're cutting it into firewood lengths or maybe even bucking logs for the sawmill, you can get it off the ground and keep your chainsaw from going in the dirt and it makes it a lot easier. I've seen a few videos of people using this thing I've also seen some photos and some blog entries on people using it. It looks like it's a pretty good tool. It's made by Logrite, which also makes our cant hooks here, and they also make the ATV arch and the fetching arch that we show in the videos. So they make good products. So this should hold up and hopefully keep our chains out of the dirt, which is the main thing, because that's one thing that's aggravating when you're cutting firewood or cutting logs, period, is you get down to the bottom and you have to stop and roll it over to keep your chain from going in the dirt. Because once your chain gets in that dirt, you gotta pull out the file and put a new edge on it. We'll get this attached to the cant hook and we'll go over a few miles away where that maple log is I'm gonna be cutting up today and we'll put it to use and see how it goes. The way this thing attaches is, based on the instructions, you just slide it over the pole of the cant hook and they send a little Allen wrench here that corresponds to the Allen heads here that attach it. So it should be pretty fast getting it on and, get, and also taking it off when you don't want to use it. Well, Fairly easy to install it here, just in a few minutes. Tighten these bolts here and we'll be ready to go. We get this maple cut to size and load up in the truck. I've also got to make another stop over at a buddy of mine's landscaping company. And that sycamore log that I showed a few weeks ago on here, it's about 50 inches diameter. He went ahead and moved those for me the other day. I cut them to eight foot lengths right before I went to Georgia, so they're ready to go. But he spread them out for me just a little so I can put the anchor seal on both ends of it. And hopefully here in about a week or two, we'll be going over there with the chainsaw mill and getting those things quartered up so we can quarter saw them. Should have some really nice quarter saw boards come out of that tree. Now for you guys that watched the Georgia Sawing Project video that we put out last week, you know what I'm talking about when I say sycamore looks really good quarter saw. And that's what we've done down there. And if you've not seen that video, there's a link down below to that. You can kind of see what Coruscant Sycamore is going to look like. And that tree they sawed up down there was about 39, maybe 40 inches. And this tree that I got to saw was about 50, so it's a lot bigger than that one. 
It should produce some really nice boards. As you can see, it easily got it up off the ground. That's the main thing is getting it off the ground. Now we'll make our cuts with the chainsaw. No fear of going in the dirt and plenty of clearance down here at the bottom.
we're back out here at the kiln where we started our day at this morning. And we'll do another check here on the water and see how much water's came out since this morning. When we left, I went ahead and dumped the water, so we'll see what's came out in the past four or five hours. And we'll check the temperature as well. I was going to do some more work here at the kiln this afternoon, put some more of this siding up, but it looks like we got some thunderstorms moving in, and it feels like it's already starting to rain. Never fails. It always rains here. I was down in my log yard last night counting up some walnuts, see how many I had on the ground to saw up between here and the farm, and I got 120 walnut logs to saw. So it looks like walnuts gonna be the main thing on this channel for the next few weeks. I gotta get that stuff sawed up and put on stickers and start air drying. Now that bit sycamore we just looked at, hopefully my next week or the week after we'll be over and start quarter sawing that as well. That's gonna be a massive project, but I got a good skid steer over to use to off bear with. Once I get that thing cut in two with the chainsaw mill, it's gonna be a lot more easier to handle. I think those logs weigh about 5,000 pounds according to the app I use for log weight. So real quick here at the end, down in the video description below, I got linked to anchor seal that I used in the video. Also, I got a link to the log stand that we used. Now, log right makes the log stand, but it's also sold on Amazon. So there's two different links for that. And there's always a link for anchor seal. I get people asking all the time about anchor seal. So I try to put that in every one of the videos. So let's go around back and check the kiln temperature and see how much water's came out since this morning. And we'll probably call this video done. Said I emptied this out when we left this morning. So much water we got now. Not much at all. So there's our temperature, 125.7. The humidity is doing real good on the wet bulb there. I have to watch this pretty close this evening though. If I get close to 130, I'll have to crack that door open. As you can see, not everything always goes as planned. Rolled all the way down the hill after I started turning it. It's a little bit flatter down there, it'd be easier to saw it down there anyways. <laughs> 